so I'm focusing my project. I want to do something on global public health. Um, and I've decided to look at antimicrobial resistance. So next slide. Um, antimicrobial resistance in general is a global health crisis and we've been aware of it for over 80 years. Um, most recent data suggests it's directly attributed to 1.2 million deaths a year and associated with over 5 million deaths a year. Um, it causes a massive increased pandemic risk um, as with most global crises, lower income countries are disproportionately affected due to lack of resources, poor sanitation and lack of access to medication. Um, and it's also a very time sensitive issue. So urgent action is needed now. Um, current predictions suggest that over 10 million people a year will be dying by 2050, which would make antimicrobial resistance a bigger killer than cancer. Current approaches focus on the One Health approach, which is that's a quote from the World Health Organization website. It's an integrated and unifying approach that aims to sustainably balance and optimize the health of people, animals, and ecosystems. Um, and those four organizations below are known as the quadripartite technical group. And they are kind of pushing for this idea of the one health approach. There's a massive range of things. So I've kind of listed them there and those are some snapshots from different articles there are loads of different approaches going on because it's this massive intersectional problem where environmental agencies health agencies animal agencies and everything needs to be involved which is obviously difficult which is how I come to my problem um which is that there's a massive lack of unity between the sectors just because there are so many people working on this project from completely different areas approaching it in completely different ways which also means there's a lack of transparency in the overall existing efforts. It's really difficult, which is what I definitely noticed in my research, to get an overview of what the current standpoint is and what effective um, things have been implemented so far and what's not worked so well could be done differently in the future. Uh, and this leads to slow and inefficient progress in general and also difficulty finding investors and funding, which then in turn leads to slow and ineffective progress. And then you end up in a big circle. Uh, and my solution was that to that was implement an international database, kind of collect and summarize all the efforts against antimicrobial resistance so far. Um, and the key features of that would kind of be to summarize all of the current and future projects aiming to combat antimicrobial resistance. I mean, future is obviously within the realms of what's possible, what's already planned and stuff. Um, and that would include looking at the resources and financing available for different projects, what the exact focus and goal is. So there are some projects looking at stewardship um, and how antibiotics are handled, as well as some projects looking at the research and development of new antibiotics or just raising public awareness in general. Um, also the size and implementation area. So there are some nationwide projects, some for example, EU-wide projects or projects in Northern America um, and also the involved parties. Is it just governmental? Are there NGOs involved? Whatever. Um, as well as compare new and existing projects to ensure there are no repeats or parallel projects. That's, there's a massive gap in the market for that at the minute. Um, there's no yearly reports of research being done on new antibiotic development in different countries and different research institutes. So it's never completely clear that there aren't people working on basically the same thing, but without realizing it and they're not working together. Um, and centralized data sources to be used for research and in future decision and policy areas. Obviously, if this database was to exist, you'd have a very clear centralized kind of go-to point to find new information, which could massively increase efficiency for future research and decisional policy ideas. And that's kind of with the theory of change ties into that. I think if all of this works and works the way I've planned it, um, it would decrease this kind of inefficient progress because there'd be a clearer focus. And I also think it would give the opportunity for investors to have a clear overview of what's happening, what's working, where can I put my money? Why do I want to invest my money into this? Um, and in terms of the concrete implementation, next slide please, of this um, project, 
then obviously do the technical side of it, finding software to create this database, finding people who can code it. I mean, I can do a little, but I don't think I'd be able to do all of that. Um, and then they'd do the data collection, which would be partly through web crawlers, looking at already published papers, looking at websites for NGOs, finding these projects, as well as through manually putting things in and manually reaching out to these organizations and the people with these ideas and asking them to type in their own ideas and to type in the, yeah, obviously the categories and stuff would be there already. The third step is outreach and marketing, getting this database there so people can use it, so people can continue to add their own ideas and so it keeps growing. Um, and the fourth would be upkeep. So keeping on updating it, making sure it's debugged, so on and so forth. Possible obstacles. Yeah, you can all read. Those are the possible obstacles. <laughs> That's it.